Hey guys, this week for Weapons Wednesday, we're checking out some of the weapons that you guys asked us to review. But before we begin, if you just like this video and subscribe to our channel, that would be awesome. So last week, I gave you guys your choice of five different weapons to choose from in order to survive in a post-apocalyptic world. And then I asked you to go to the community tab and vote for which one you would choose. And you guys went to the community tab and chose the Japanese Nada Machete. Excellent choice, guys. This was absolutely my favorite as well, so awesome job. So this week, I asked Amanda to go through some of our old YouTube videos and find weapons that you guys specifically asked for me to review. So, at the end of this video, make sure you guys go to the community tab and vote for which of these weapons you like best. And as always, there's links in the description of the video so you can find out more information on each of these products. So, without further ado, Amanda, what is our very first weapon? There you go. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, Amanda. Alright, let's see what this is. Oh, cool. <laughs> All right, and our very first weapon is the Colossal Sawback Bowie Knife. Nice, nice. I love Bowie Knives, and I know you guys do too, because you always seem to vote for them in the polls. So let's take a look at this Bowie Knife. All right, so first off, we can see that it has a black nylon sheath with a belt loop on it. And uh, this is a decent nylon sheath, not the most heavy duty one I've seen, but it actually seems like it'll protect the blade pretty well for us. Uh, but I wanna see the blade itself, so let's just take a look at that. Oh wow, look at that. That is nuts. That is probably the most intimidating looking sawback I think I've ever seen on a Bowie knife. Uh, the manufacturer refers to this as a gator back. I, I don't know, I've never actually heard of that being referred to as a gator back before. So it personally kind of looks like a dolphin fin to me and not a gator back. Uh, but if you guys know what that type of sawback is actually called, Definitely leave them in the comments because I'm very curious, but it's definitely intimidating looking, so kind of cool. Um, looks like the blade itself is made from a stainless steel. Uh, it doesn't say what type of stainless steel it is, but based on the sheen, I would be willing to bet that this is a 440 stainless steel. Uh, we can also see that the handguard and the pommel is made from a stainless steel as well, and the blade goes full tang all the way through the handle, uh, so that's gonna hold up for us really Really nice but I do like the fact that that is a stainless steel pommel because we can use it for additional attacks as well so let's just check that out oh yeah I mean look at the dent that put into that wing chun dummy so that is pretty neat uh, we can see that the blade also has this venting along the blade uh, now that venting is clearly there for aesthetic appeal uh, it's actually very shallow as far as that fuller goes uh, so that's not going to take a lot of weight off the blade, uh, but it does look pretty cool, so that's neat. Uh, we can also see that this does have a clip point blade to it, uh, which is so common when it comes to Bowie knives, so I think this looks like a really intimidating looking blade. Uh, if we look at the handle on this, we can see that it does have a pack of wood handle, which is really comfortable. That has the ergonomic grip to it, fits very nicely in my hand. I actually really like this knife. I think it's pretty neat. Uh, let's test it out just a little bit. First off, let's just smack this wing chun dummy a little bit. I mean, that stuck in there pretty, pretty darn good. I mean, look at that. That's in there very, very solid. I think this is gonna hold up pretty nicely. I mean, look at that. <laughs> I'm digging this knife. Now, the overall length of this is approximately 15 inches. The blade length is approximately nine and a half inches, and the total weight is approximately one pound, one ounce. So that is a really nice weight for this knife. But that's about all I have to say about this, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this away, and let's move on to our next weapon. All right, Amanda, what is the next weapon you've got for me today? There you go. Awesome, thank you. All right, let's see what this guy is. Oh wow, I'm, I'm actually really surprised we've never shown this off before. So our next weapon is the Hidden Blade Walking Stick. All right, let's check this guy out. 
Okay, so first off, we can see that it comes with this really nice heavy duty nylon case. Uh, and it's got a shoulder strap on it. So I could see this being used for like hiking purposes or outdoor purposes. So I actually kind of like this. I mean, doesn't that look classy on me? All right, well, let's check out what this actually is inside the case. All right, look at that. Look how compact that is. That is so cool. But let's check out what this actually is. So it looks like we've got a bunch of pieces of steel here and we hook them together and then we can kind of make a walking stick out of this. Um, it's not a walking stick in the traditional sense that it's got like a footing on it or anything, uh, but it is the right size to be a walking stick. So that's kind of neat. All right, there we go. So it looks like the overall length of this when it is a walking stick is approximately three feet. So as far as that goes, it feels pretty comfortable. Now I'm six foot four, so it is a little short for me, but if I was hiking, I could actually see that coming in handy. But we don't really care about that. We wanna see how this thing actually turns into a weapon. So let's just check that out. All right, so all we do is we unscrew this end over here. And check that out. That is awesome. So we've got this kind of tri-edge spear point here that is really long. I mean, that the length of that spear tip is approximately 10 and a quarter inches. I mean, look at that. That is so cool. So the spear tip itself is made from a stainless steel with a gray finish on it. I mean, that looks really sleek. Very nice. The spear is not sharpened on the edges, but the tip is actually very sharp, so that's pretty cool. And then we can take the cap that we unscrewed off of that and hook it to the end, so then that actually extends the spear itself. So that's pretty neat. Now we have an overall length of the spear of approximately 46 inches, so that actually feels really comfortable. So let's actually test that out on the Wing Chun dummy for just a sec. Oh, <laughs> I was afraid the Wing Chun dummy was going to kind of fall over, but that actually just stuck right into it. Holy <laughs> cow. <laughs> I don't know if I... I... I don't think I can get this thing out. I guess I'll wiggle it. There you go. Awesome, awesome. I'm super impressed with this thing. That is really, really cool. And you know what else is really awesome about it? Is if I unscrew this, all of a sudden we have two weapons. We have a spear in this hand and I've got a club in this hand. So that is pretty darn cool. Now this is made from a steel with a black oxidized finish to it. And as you can see, there's knurling all over these sections. It's gonna give you a really nice grip. The other thing that's really awesome about it is because it's hollow in here, we can actually bring other survival supplies with us. Like we could throw in a fishing line or a fire starter or some paracord. So I love these kind of survival tools. And one other thing that I forgot to mention is that we can make the spear whatever length we want. Like we could take off some of the sections and make it a shorter spear. We could make it a long spear. We could even make it like a knife sized spear by taking off all the sections. So. That's kind of cool. Now the total weight of this with all the sections together is actually two pounds, 11.5 ounces. So that is a wonderful weight for this weapon. But that's about all I have to say about this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this away and let's move on to our next weapon. All right, Amanda, what is our next weapon today? There you go. Awesome, and you know what? Since you have this fan base that clearly loves you, why don't you come over here and just say hi to everyone? It's so sad to me. More people ask about Amanda than me every week, so. Hi guys. <laughs> That's Amanda. <laughs> All right, so here is our next weapon. Oh geez, <laughs> this is actually really funny because you know I answer all of the comments that you guys leave on there and the weapon we get asked about the most is this weapon and I don't really understand it but I'm glad we're showing it off. So our next weapon is the Dark Assassin Knuckle Knife, okay. <laughs> So for me, when I look at this, it kind of looks like a mall ninja weapon, but we sell so many of these things, and I think it's because they're so inexpensive. 
All right, well, let's just take a closer look at this. So first off, this comes with this nylon sheath, and uh, it's not the most heavy duty nylon sheath, but it is nice because that's gonna protect your blade for you. And it's got a belt loop so we can hang it from the side of our body if we want to. But let's look at the blade itself. So we can see that this is made from one solid piece of 3CR13 stainless steel with a black finish to it. So that's kind of nice that it is one solid piece, but that's so thin that I'm worried that's actually gonna hurt my knuckle if I use this as a knuckle duster in any sense. It's actually fairly comfortable though. Because there's this thumb rise right here, it gives me good control of the blade. The blade is actually fairly intimidating too. Uh, it's clearly a trench knife, so that's something you guys need to keep in mind because there are some very strict laws about trench knives, so make sure you guys check your local laws just to make sure that this isn't illegal in your area. Uh, but the blade itself, is fairly sharp. Obviously it's a trailing point blade, kind of goes up on the tip there. The tip itself is actually extremely sharp. So let's just test that out really quick. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's definitely a sharp tip. Um, and then, yeah, the blade itself is actually pretty sharp too. That's stuck in pretty nicely. Um, my concern, of course, is because that's so thin, it worries me that it's gonna hurt my knuckles there a little bit. I'm gonna try punching this just lightly. Yeah, yeah, so that kind of dug into my knuckles just a little bit down there. So that bothers me just a little bit and that happens because the palm grip is so thin and because this metal is so thin. So with knuckle dusters, you wanna try using them in different ways. I'm gonna try putting it at like this and swiping with it and see if that feels any better. Yeah, that actually, that actually does feel a little bit better, but because it is a trench knife, you probably wouldn't hold it like this. You'd probably hold it like this so you can get that thumb rise really nice. Now we can also see that there's this gray nylon cord that wraps around the finger holes and around the palm grip, and that did help to give it a little more comfort while I was holding it. But let's try this in another grip. All right, in reverse grip, that's actually a little more comfortable. I'm, I'm surprised, that actually feels pretty good. Yeah, I actually have better control of that knife in reverse grip than I did in forward grip. So I think that's kind of a nice little aspect to this knife. Feels pretty comfortable. Now the overall length of this is approximately 10 and 1 8 inches. The blade length is approximately five and a half inches and the total weight is approximately 4.8 ounces. So that is super light. And the only other thing I want to mention is that the holes for the fingers have a diameter of approximately 7 8 inches, which is a fairly decent size. I have large hands, it fits me nicely, but if you have enormous hands, you might want to take that into consideration. But that's about all I have to say about this, so I'm going to go ahead and put this away, and let's move on to our next weapon. All right, Amanda, what is our last weapon? There you go. Awesome, awesome, a big one. All right, let's see what this guy is. Ah, it's a sword. <laughs> All right, and our last weapon is the Atomic Assassin Katana. Wow, that sounds cool. All right, so first off, we can see that it comes with this nice black sword bag, and that's just gonna help to keep your blade just a little more clean, dust off of it. Uh, but you guys don't care about that. You wanna see the sword itself, so let's open this up and check that out. Oh, wow, that is beautiful. I love the colors on this sword, it's amazing. All right, so first off, if we look at the scabbard, it's very nice and glossy, and then we can see that it's got these kind of gold and blue starbursts or, or paint splatter designs on it. Very, very nice looking, but I wanna see the blade itself, so let's just open this up. Oh, wow, look at that blade. I love the anodization on this thing. That just looks so cool. The contrast of colors there is just amazing on this sword. So the blade itself is made from a 65 manganese steel, which is known for being a very hard steel with a great edge retention and wear resistance. And then if we look at the Suba, that is really detailed. It's got these little flower patterns in there and it appears to be made out of a zinc aluminum with a black finish to it. Now, if we look at the suka or the handle of this sword, we can see that it's covered in this black and gold wrap. And underneath the wrap, we've got a synthetic ray skin which has really grown in popularity recently due to conservation purposes. 
And we can also see that it's got these really nice detailed Dragon Manuki in there, uh, which just gives it a really good aesthetic appeal. The overall length of this sword is approximately 39 and a half inches, and the blade length is approximately 28 and a quarter inches, and the sword weighs approximately two pounds, five ounces. So this is just a beautiful sword. Honestly, I probably wouldn't even use this for sword practice. I'd probably just display this on my mantle at home because this is such a pretty blade. But that's about all I have to say about this. But I'm very curious to see what you guys think, so make sure you guys go to the community tab and vote for which weapon you like best this week. And if you have any questions on this sword or any of the other weapons I showed off in this video, definitely leave them in the comments below. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. And check out KarateMart.com because we've got all sorts of awesome weapons on there right now. But until next week, we'll see you Weapons Wednesday.